Welcome back to another reloading and rambling. Sitting here loading up some of these little teeny tiny 380s today. Not one of my favorite rounds to reload. I reload these out of necessity more so than anything. Because strangely enough, even though it's just a nine millimeter short, it is one of those rounds where you can save a little bit of money than buying factory. So I load them and I tend to have better results with with my hand loads than from factory 380 anyway it seems like factory 380 you either get really really warm stuff or it's just all over the place it's I like, I like my hand loads better so we'll just leave it at that but anyways don't be paying attention to all this junk behind me either because this i've been in a fight with that 18 inch 6.5 Grendel barrel. Not so much the barrel. I'd forgotten that I actually had bought that upper complete. And every time that I checked the barrel nut, you know, because if you watch my stuff, you know I've been fighting trying to find an accurate load for it. And every time I checked the barrel nut, I always just checked it to make sure that it was tight, torqued tight. Never did try to take it off. And, oh my lord. That sucker is so over torqued. It's unreal. Heat and a breaker bar. Couldn't get it loose. I'm going to do a whole video on that anyway because I'm in the process of dealing with Bear Creek as we speak. But anyway, today's topic is going to be everyday carry knives. And you all may or may not know this about me, but I'm actually a pretty big knife fan, especially when it comes to a lot of the older slip joint type knives, like case knives and stuff. I have quite a collection of case knives, uh, some of the old German stuff. If it's German, I want it to be older German, like the older older German stag stuff. Some of the old German eyeballs. Um, I got some of the older hen and roosters, older kissing cranes. Uh, you know, the, just just the older, older German stuff, but mostly everything that I like is I like a lot of case stuff. And I don't like... I'm not really into a lot of the case patterns that are super popular. Like, I don't like the cheetahs. I don't like the uh, congresses, the 88 pattern congresses. I like more of the oddball stuff. Like, one of my favorite patterns is the 83 pattern Whittler. So, I like case Whittlers. I like the 08 patterns, which is the half Whittler. Uh, the 80 patterns, of course. The carpenter Whittler. Uh, you know... If you know anything about case knives you know what i'm talking about if not just know i like case knives and one of my everyday carry knives i always carry two knives and one of them is always going to be a what i call a slicey type knife or something that needs like a, a pretty slicey blade something that's that's pretty sharp for some sharp work and that's going to be whatever case knife i'm carrying most of the time it's going to be this 31 and a half pattern now this is kind of the uh what they call they call the bigger pattern this the 99 and a half pattern the rail splitter this is just the little brother to it but it's got the long pull on it this is a 79 model uh i really like the 70s cases this they got that half stop there oh for an old knife listen to that snap Oh yeah, and it's got a good heavy blade on it. I like the that heavier blade on this on this knife here. I need to earl it a little bit. It's starting to get a little rough, but I carry it all the time. And then got a smaller pin type blade here, and that sucker that blade right there stays razor sharp, super easy to sharp to sharpen too. This one has Delrin handles. It's kind of the one of the first polymers, I guess, plastics that they put on there. But, you know, it's not nothing really collectible because it is Delrin. Get, Delrin's actually getting a little bit harder to find these days, but typically Delrin's not something collectible. But I like that pattern, and it doesn't have any special handles on it or anything, so I carry it. And I like the 70s stuff, so that's my slicey blade. And then I will typically carry what I call more of a utility blade, which will be something, you know, I don't care to pry with a little bit i got to uh cut open boxes and stuff like that that's going to dull a blade real quick uh you know digging in dirt or whatever i gotta do it's more the the beat around bang around utility blade just as the name what i call it when i say it is anyways and a lot of times that'll be a bigger 
lock back knife. If it's something I'm going to be using for heavy use, I want it to be a lock back for sure. I don't want to use a slip joint in that case. And a lot of times it'll be something like, you know, this is a USA buck here. Not anything, you can tell, I use my knives. <laughs> this one needs clean too, but this is a stainless, so I ain't worried about it. But uh, just something that hold a good edge, take a good edge, decent size, not nothing special on the handles, feels good, light, and it has to have a good pocket clip. I'll carry this one quite a bit, actually. That's, that's a good utility blade. And then, not I'm carrying right now, I'll carry my old Leatherman, because it does have a decent little lockback utility blade in there, serrated. I don't really care much for serrated blades. This one has one on it, but I just, once the serrations go dull, it's like, I can't ever get them right again. I'd rather have just a standard blade because I can actually sharpen. I can, you know, that's getting to be a lost art. You know what? I don't know how many people can't sharpen a damn knife for the West Coast. You gotta have, gotta have those sharpeners with the guides and the, the sticks and all that stuff to keep your angle straight. My papa taught me how to do it on a whetstone. Stroke it with some leather. We're good to go. Start shaving off a little bit if I have to. But then my wife got me this. I don't carry this one a whole, whole lot, even though I should. It's probably one of the best utility blades out there. It's Benchmade Bear Creek. But I do carry this when I'm hunting. And the reason being is, you know, not only does it have an excellent super steel blade, the S30V, good steel, excellent steel, and this bench made here. I love this cam lock for the for the lock back itself, but it also has a gut hook, which is not something you see super often on a folder. And I actually use it to to uh, skin and gut the deer that I got last this last fall with that. But I, I like carrying, being able to carry a folder for a hunting knife. And you know, that knife there would work as a great everyday carry utility knife as well. It's just one of those knives that my wife got me. So it's a gift, has a little sentimental value. Plus it's fairly expensive. And for me, if I'm carrying this, which was about a $90 knife or so, and I lose it, so I uh, Let's get another one. Go on. It don't hold any sentimental value. Don't have a whole lot of monetary value, especially now after I've already beat the piss out of it. But you know, if I lose it, you know, grab something just like it and get on. No big deal. But since I did show you a hunting knife, I do want to show you this one that I had custom made from a guy that was on Forged in Fire, by the way. And this has lacewood handles. He made the, he's not a sheath maker and he told me he's not a sheath maker. He just made this sheath for me to have a sheath for it. But I do need to get an actual good sheath made. But check this out. Ooh, look at that Damascus. Boy, ain't that pretty. And it holds a good edge too. That sucker, to be a big thick blade like that holds a really, really good edge. That lace wood is just beautiful. And I had him pattern this out of one of my favorite hunting knife, fixed blade hunting knives. And that's the Buck Omni Hunter, I believe. I may have one sitting here. Let me look real quick. I ain't gonna look real long. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Okay. I've had this knife for a long time and Buck quit making them. But this was my favorite fixed blade hunting knife. And that's the pattern of it. I use my knives, guys. I need to clean them more, apparently. But that's the pattern of it. The gut hook, of course. The other one doesn't have the gut hook. But, you know, you can tell the handle shape and everything's real, real similar to what he made for me. Because this is my favorite hunting knife pattern for a fixed blade. And, man, that in a custom blade like that with that Damascus. <sighs> Love this knife. Love that knife. But, you didn't know we were gonna be talking about knives on the gun channel though, did you? I'm actually really, really, really into knives. It's, I take weird spells where I'll go through a spell where I buy a bunch of fixed blade knives and I'm all into fixed blades for a while. And then I'll go through where I get back. I'll tell you the worst thing ever happened to me is I discovered those Facebook online knife auctions where those guys get on there and they sell case knives just one right after another. I mean, I'm talking two, three hours of sitting there bidding on knives. And it, it becomes, a, it becomes, you know, you like the knives and stuff, but it becomes a, a thing of, oh, I'm going to win this bid. You know, it, it becomes a, a 
hobby in itself, just doing the, the bid wars and stuff. Man, I've I've got off in one of them auctions before and just been like, oh, I did not want to see that invoice when it comes through. Because then shoot, guys, they'll have, sometimes they'll have, you know, forty four or forty sixty four pattern or year knives on there, the old straight double X's. You know, they have some Bradford knives, which means it's pre early, early, like early 1900s knives. It look like they've just come off the mint. Looks brand spanking new. So you're talking some of those blades go for four or five thousand dollars, you know. I just I can't spend that on a on a collection. My luck, I'd I'd buy a, a case Bradford like that, put it in my roll, and I'd have some some weird anomaly, some chemical in the air float through and it would oxidize the blades and there I'd be. A $5,000 knife just turned into a $500 knife. That'd be my luck. But, you know, I, I do have some fairly pricey old cases that I've shelled out some money for. I got into a kick of buying copperheads there for a while. It's 49 patterns, two blade <laughs> copperheads. And I ended up buying a whole set of like centennial, <laughs> centennial year, some some kind of crap like that. All stag, blue scroll stuff. And, but yeah, I spent a little money on that. I got an Elvis knife too. You may or may not know this about me and my wife, but we're big Elvis fans. Love me some Elvis. We went and visited Graceland. That was last summer. Uh, I've got a case knife in a in a case an actual like wood case with elvis's signature on the back of it so that's pretty cool that's actually on display with a couple i've got a couple old uh, granddad barlows that are in a display cases that are were, were like the i forget who all the the founders of Case were, but it's got their pictures on it. I forget all their names, but it's got their pictures on it and Stag Hamill, Granddaddy Barlow in the display. I've got that displayed with the Elvis knife. That's actually in my living room, believe it or not. I'll talk to the wife and let me have that in the living room. <laughs> but if it wouldn't have been for the Elvis knife, she wouldn't let me. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, I'm actually a big knife fan. I like all knives. I'm not a big fan of Pakistan knives. I'm not a big fan of Rough Rider knives. Rough Rider would be a good utility knife. If you don't have much in it, hold up, do some stuff, cut some hay strings on the go. I'm not a big fan of the gas station type tactical knives, nothing like that. But, you know, quality knives. I like quality knives. We'll just say that. But that's what I got for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't get to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, stay tuned.